A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! The first armored wagon ever used in the West was rolling down the trail from Gold Ledge with a $50,000 shipment of bullion. Yeah, yeah, Ahead lay broken country where road agents often struck. But Shorty McGann, the driver, and the three men who rode shotgun with him felt no concern. The box in which they sat was ironclad. It had gun ports at points of vantage and in its top a hatch that could be opened only from the inside. The lines attached to the eight big horses were manipulated through an opening over which a hinged shield hung, ready to drop at a jerk on a chain. To Shorty, such an arrangement was a grievous handicap. He fretted. How come sign this four-wheeled armadillo? What's the matter, Shorty? Ah, oh, plenty, Jack. Cooped up this way, I can't crack a whip on these lazy plugs. I can't even cross crop. Well, suits me. Me too. No bushwhack can get at us here. Where are we at, anyhow? Well, yonder's the big butte they call the Devil's Doorknob. I see it. Say, what's that in the trail? Oh, a lot of big rocks. Must have been a rock slide. Well, I can't get over them with this land going gunboat. Whoa, you hammerhead. Whoa. Whoa. Well, what'll we do? Get out and clear the trail? Not by a jugful. I'm turning back. Those boulders might have been rolled there by a bunch of owl hoots. Hey. There's smoke coming from under the wagon. Yeah, Jack, I smell powder smoke. Maybe it's a fuse. It is a fuse. We're going to be blown up. Get out and let us through. Several weeks later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stood by their horses, surveying the scene of the blast, which had wrecked the armored wagon, killed its crew and delivered a fortune into the hands of unknown bandits. The crime had been discovered long since, but the wagon still lay beside the trail, ripped and twisted. The masked man was saying, Toto, I see nothing here that wasn't in the newspaper stories. Ah, if robbers leave any sign, it had gone a long time ago. Yes, hundreds of people have been here. Um, Where we go now? To Gold Ledge. Oh. Easy, steady, silver. That's where the wagon started his last trip. Uh, horses need drink. We'll watch for water. Come on, silver. Get him up, scout. Must be water somewhere around this ranch house. It looked like nobody here. Let's not be too sure. 
And a shoot from Mount Clark House. Close in on him. Come on, Silver. Don't scout. Let him go. Me, mommy, boy. Drop that rifle. Me, hand him off. The Winchester's jammed. Hold him. Hold him. Stand still there. Go on, kill me. That's what you're here for. We, we came looking for water. Now, why did you shoot at us, boy? I, I guess I made a mistake. I thought the masked man was someone else. But his voice is different. We made a mistake, too. Miss, your hair is falling out from under your hat. Well, him girl. Got boy's clothes on. I, I didn't want you to know. Easy, steady, Silver. Now look, young lady, we may be able to help you. I, I don't know. Suppose you start by telling us your name. I'm Trudy Dawes. I came here from the East a few months ago with my father, John Hammond Dawes. He was an artist. You said was. A week ago, Dad was murdered by a masked man. Oh. I saw it happen. It was dark. Dad was in his studio, and I'd gone to my room, leaving the door open enough to see out. I heard horses, then the door opened, and a man came in. I see. Dad was dead before I realized what was happening. When the sheriff came, he said Dad must have got mixed up in a neighborhood feud over water rights. I take it you remember the gunman's voice... Since you said mine wasn't like it. Mister, I'll never forget that voice. It was flat and deadly. I'd like to see your father's studio. All right. Why are you dressed like that, Miss Dawes? I've been watching and waiting for the murderer to come back. You have a lot of courage. That's the chair where Dad was sitting. There's his easel and paint box. And there... There's his last landscape. Otto, that's Devil's Doorknob. And there's the trail. The exact spot where the armored wagon was blasted is in the background of the painting. Me see it. Miss Dawes, when did your father finish this painting? The day before that awful robbery. Did he seem worried afterward? He suddenly quit painting and started going to Gold Ledge every day. I think he saw something while he was painting. Something that made him dangerous to the bandits. I never thought of that. But I believe you're right. Are you known in Gold Ledge? I've never been there. Why do you ask? Because there's a dance hall in the town called the Happy Land. Every crook in these parts shows up there sooner or later. I understand. You want me to go there and listen for the killer. I don't ask it, Miss Dawes. You'd be in danger even with Toto and me standing by. I'm not afraid. But how can I get into the place? Can you sing? I have a fair voice. Then you can get a job as an entertainer. There are openings for singers all the time. Leave the rest to me. Roistering miners, gamblers, and gunmen pack the happy land, the big two-story building. All eyes were on the open stairway as red-haired Kate, the proprietress, shouted... Sit down, everybody! It's time for the show! As the crowd watched and waited... A lean, thin-lipped man who wore crossed cartridge belts and kept his thumbs hooked close to his gun butt swaggered up to Kate. Where's that new singer I've been hearing about? <laughs> Take it easy, Flash. She'll be here in a minute. What's her name? Oh, Trudy something or other. She blew in on the stage a couple of days ago. The rock busters are crazy to hear her. Is that her coming down the stairs? Oh, yeah. Here comes our girl. $50 if she sings Clementine. Oh, hold it, slow, Susan. Oh, hurry up, Trudy. Hold on, hold on. What song is it going to be, Kate? The one I picked, girl. What? I'm Flash Holden. What I say goes around this joint. What's the matter, Trudy? I, I just feel faint. Don't run a ranny on me, girl. You're going to sing my favorite oh. song. Jesse's gone to rest. No, Just no. give me a few seconds and I'll be all right. Now, see here, fella. You trying to jump my claim on the first song? You better back out while you can, hombre. I got in the high bid, you polecat. A polecat, am I? Hold it, Flash. You ass foot. Oh. I guess that did it. You, you... Come on, baby. Get up on that platform and sing. Jesse's gone to rest. It was after midnight before Trudy found an opportunity to slip out of the dance hall and keep a prearranged rendezvous with a lone ranger. They met in a wooded lot several blocks from the happy land. The girl poured out her story. Mister, I found the man who killed my father. What's his name, Trudy? Flash Holden. Toto's been watching outside the happy land. 
Tomorrow night, I'll have him go in and take a look at Holden. I'll point him out. Yes, but be careful. Meet me here again, and I'll take you back to the ranch. I understand. Now I'd better get back to the dance hall. Goodbye, mister. Adios, Miss Dawes. Meanwhile, Kate had retired to her private quarters in the Happy Land. With her were two of her toughest hirelings, Polk Mason and Lanky Hall. I wonder where Flash is. He snuck out right after that new girl went for a walk. Oh, Polk, I wish he hadn't hit that miner. He'll get us into trouble. He might have killed that rockbuster. Oh, where'd you put him, Lanky? In the back room. Send him on his way when he comes to. Oh, we got to be careful. That gold's in the cellar. We should have buried it on the mesa. Not safe to bury anything. Seems like there's always someone around to see you. I guess you're right, Lanky. Who'd have supposed that artist fellow would be sitting up on a hill painting pictures when we planted the blasting powder at Devil's Doorknob? Never would have known he was a witness if he hadn't come snooping around the Happy Land playing detective on his own. It's lucky for us he tipped his hand. Yeah, it's lucky we got him before he went to the sheriff. Now listen to me, you two. Flash has been scouting around for a place to turn that gold into cash. Now he's found out it's colors against us. <laughs> so red, any government buyer would know it came from the mines here. We'll have to hide the stuff where it'll be safe till things cool off. And that may take a long time. Well, here's Flash now. Where in tarnation have you been, Flash? I followed that new singer when she left here tonight. Oh, yeah? She met a fellow in that clump of cottonwoods down the street, a big hombre in a white hat, riding a white stallion. And get this. He wore a mask. Boys, we got to trap that masked man. You're the boss, Keith. If the girl's a spy and she's reporting to him... He'll likely be at the same place again. Now, we'll lay for him. Somewhere I heard about a fella like the one you've seen, Flash. And they call him the Lone Ranger. Kate and Lanky were waiting inside Trudy's room when she returned. What are you doing in here? Keep your voice down, Trudy, or I'll let you have this knife in your back. Sit down here with your back to me and answer questions. Don't twist my arm. I'll sit down. Who was that masked man you met tonight? I don't know. Oh, you little liar. Are you and him after the gold? Lanky, you fool, shut up. What gold? What are you talking about? Never mind that. What'd you tell that fella? It's none of your business. You talk or I'll break your arm off. I was looking for that. I got my hand over her. Well, keep it there. She won't talk unless we get tough. A gag and tire till we get that masked man. Right. And we'll take them both someplace where noise won't matter. The next night, as the Lone Ranger rode into the outskirts of Gold Ledge from his camp in the surrounding hills, Tonto galloped up. The masked man was about to pull up when the Indian whirled Scout around and slowed him to Silver's pace. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Easy. Kim Sabi. Yes. Me on way to camp when me see you. What's wrong, Toto? Well, girl not sing tonight. Maybe something wrong. Where's her room? Five windows back from front on the west side. Me see light there. The west windows overlook a row of one-story buildings. That's right. She may come to our meeting place. I'll go there. You get back to the dance hall and scout around for a way to get into the upper floor from the outside. Me go. Get him up, Scout. Soon after parting with Tonto, the Lone Ranger guided Silver into the cottonwood grove where Trudy previously had reported to him. Oh, Silver, easy. As the masked man studied his surroundings in the faint moonlight, he caught a glimpse of something white on the ground nearby. He looked again. It was a woman's form. He swung from his saddle, calling... Miss Dollars, are you hurt? He's off his horse! Get him, fellas! Coming, Kate! Fire into him, all of you! Let me grab him! Oh, he's licking the lot of you! Suck him, Flash! Oh, man, that did it! We got him! He's down! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Trudy Dawes was a prisoner in the Happy Land Dance Hall, and the Lone Ranger had gone down in a tangle of arms and legs as red-haired Kate's gang attacked from ambush. So eager were the desperadoes to take him alive that they had paid no heed to Silver, who stood nearby with flattened ears and quivering muscles. Suddenly the great stallion reared and lashed out with his forelegs. Lashing hoofs fanned Flash Holden's face. He reeled away, yelling. That horse, watch out! Get me out of here! Get me out of free! The critter's loco! Hey, the mask man's up! Grab him! Steady, Silver, steady, big fella! Hold the Silver! Then he is the Lone Ranger! Let him have it! There goes his hat! He's hit! He's still in the sand! Come on, boys! After him! Don't let him get away! Flash Holden's bullet had grazed the masked man's shoulder as he bent low in his saddle. But he gave no thought to a minor wound, knowing now that the ambush had been planned and that Trudy Dawes must be in danger. He sent Silver thundering down the street toward the dance hall. Behind him, red-haired Kate and her henchmen were in their saddles and shouting. The sound of the gunfire carried to the happy land, and its doors opened to erupt gunmen. And in, the masked man scanned the buildings which fronted the walk. Just ahead was the usual village firehouse with its bell rope dangling down where anyone could reach it in an emergency. He kicked his boots free from his stirrups, grasped the rope, and swung himself from the cantle, leaving Silver to gallop on. The weight of his body swung the bell. Its clapper struck home. His purpose betrayed, he hoisted himself upward hand over hand as his pursuers closed in. Where'd he go? Oh, didn't you hear the bell? He went up the road. I don't see him. Well, then he's on the roof. What do we do, Kate? Get the ladders out of the firehouse and go after him. Come on, Ned. The masked man made his way across a flat roof concealed by the false front of one of the buildings. He leaped across a narrow space to the one-story general store. Crossing this, he came to the west wall of the dance hall. The lighted window described by Tonto was almost level with the roof on which he stood. He peered through and saw Trudy helplessly bound and gagged. Seconds counted. He could hear the men in the street below and knew that it was just a matter of time when he would be discovered. He tried the window and found it locked. Then he swung a boot. <coughs> Trudy turned startled eyes as she saw the masked man leap through the opening and stride to her side. It's all right, Miss Toss. We'll get rid of that gag first. There. Thank goodness you've come. How to cut those cords on your hands and feet. There's a guard on the balcony just beyond the door. A fellow called Lanky. He must have heard you smash the window. He'll be coming in here. Now your feet. There he is. Drop that gun. You're the masked man. I said drop that gun. I'm going to win. I'll show you. You held your fire too long. I should have shot you. Boy, boy. I can't waste any time with you. I'll get you for that. Here's another. One more. No, no. You knocked him through the balcony railing. He fell on the dance floor. There are men on the roofs outside. The crowd downstairs will be coming up. I know another way out. At the end of the balcony, there's a stairway down to the alley. All right, run for it. There's the stairs. We have to be careful about opening this door. I see somebody out there. Yes, this tunnel with silver. You see what happened, Kimosabe? Me wait with silver. Hold fast, Miss Dawes. All right, up you go. There you are. Steady, Silver. Easy. Where are you taking me? To our camp. Hello, you watch this place tonight. Morning, bring out a horse and the boys outfit for Miss Dawes. Me savvy. One silver. It was several hours later. The Happy Land's doors had been closed to the public, but Kate and her top killers lingered at a table discussing the night's events. And now to top everything else, that miner in the back room is dead. What's the difference? We'll dump him somewhere. Don't forget we got to get rid of the gold, too. With that masked man on the loose, anything can happen. Yeah, there's no telling how much he knows about us. He may have spies watching the place. We can't just move those ingots out in the chest like we brought them in. I don't see how we can keep from tipping our hands. Polk, go see who's at the door. Right. The sheriff Ford and some what? deputies. The sheriff? What's he after? Ah, uh, we can handle those beds, Tootie. Leather your guns and follow my play. All right, Polk, let him in. Oh, 
Howdy, Sheriff. What brings you to town? Howdy, kids. I got word that you were having a riot. <laughs> Not a riot, just a ruckus. Some hombre in a mess kidnapped my singer. Singer? Yeah. Uh, there's something else, Sheriff. A fella just died here. Well, that's different. He was a miner, and he picked a fight with Flash. Yeah, I had to hit him. But I didn't mean to hit him so hard. You gunnies always have to kill a man. It was self-defense. Who was this miner? Oh, just John. If he had a last name, nobody knows it. And I suppose I'll have to bury him. Uh, uh I'll take care of that myself, Sheriff, if you let me. Yeah. I feel downright sorry about what happened. Go ahead. I don't object to anything that saves my time and the county's money. I'll give him a nice funeral. Let's take a look at him. Polk, you show the sheriff and his men where he is. Just a second, Sheriff. Yeah? Do you have any ideas of trying to arrest me for the death of that man? What if I have, Flash? I just wanted you to know that I can produce a lot of witnesses as to how he got to be hurt. That's right, Sheriff. The critter was just spoiling for trouble. Flash hit him when he went for a gun. Like I said, it was self-defense. Yep, I know. It's always self-defense when one of the happy little men kills someone. Don't worry, Flash. I know better than to try to make a case against you. At some time, you'll make a mistake. And then maybe things will be different. Now, where is the dead man? Come on, Sheriff. Kate, what was the idea of telling him about that miner? He might have got me into trouble with the sheriff. I told him as part of a scheme I just thought up. Now, listen to this. The next morning, Tonto was at the Lone Ranger's camp. He had brought not only the things Trudy needed but a report of strange activities at Happy Land. First, you see Sheriff go into dance hall. After a while, him leave. Then three fella come out of the back door with big bundle. Did you follow them? Uh-huh. Me trail them. You see him throw bundle in river. Maybe it was the stolen gold. I heard something at the Happy Land that makes me think it was there yesterday. They haven't already moved it. They'll soon try to hide it someplace else. They know now that we're after them. Ah, oh, that's right. But bundle not have gold in it, so... Me see boots stick out. He might have been the man Flash Holden hit with his gun. Well, me hear Sheriff say that fella die from wounds. Him say red-haired Kate try to square things. Her get up big funeral, hold open house for all manners. So she's going to bury a body that isn't there. What can it mean? It means that red-haired Kate and her killers have outsmarted themselves. Get ready, Miss Dawes. We're riding for Boot Hill. Funeral cortege moved slowly up the mesquite covered slope of Boot Hill with a covered wagon in the lead. Next in line, riding in a buckbird, were the dance hall musicians, followed by a red haired Kate. Curious down people, cow hands, and miners made up the rest of the procession. Sheriff Ford and his deputies rode herd on them. The lawman was saying, We'd better keep our eyes peeled, men. This funeral is likely to bust up in a battle. It wouldn't surprise me, Sheriff. Hey, the wagon stopped. Oh, yeah. Let's cut around and get up close. Get up there. Get up. Oh. They're unloading the coffin now, Sheriff. Yes, yes, he. Well, here we are. Oh, 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 oh. Steady. Oh. Howdy, kid. That's a mighty stout box you fixed up there for the minor fella. Howdy, Sheriff. I didn't expect you here. Well, I just wanted to see the things went off peaceful. Hey, watch it, you hombre. Set it down by the edge of the hole. Easy, fellas. Well, there it is. Now, where's the parson? He's not here yet. Well, somebody's coming over the top of the hill. Look, Sheriff, it's a mass man. What in tarnation can a mass man want at a funeral? There's an engine and a kid following. Hey, let's get out of the way, boys. Hold it, everybody. Sheriff, that's the fellow who kidnapped the singer from my place. Stranger. What's the idea of holding up a funeral? You gonna let him get away with it, Sheriff? There he is. There's Flash Holden, the man who murdered my father. What's it? 
Where you were the Dodge girl? Miss Dawes' father was killed because he'd seen the gang that blew up the armored wagon. Miss, how come you know Holden shot him? I heard the colonel's voice that night. I'll swear that it was Flash Holden. What about it, Holden? That's not so. You asked for it, Miss Dawes. Oh, you don't? Oh, it was my arm. It was my arm. The rest of you stay put. I'll find out about this. There's other evidence, Sheriff. Otto, rip that coffin open. Uh-huh. Mister, you're going too far. What's the miner's body got to do with what you've been telling me? You'll find the body in the river. What's been coming off here? You soon see. There. Ah, he got it open now. Yeah, I'll take a look. The life is gone. What's in it, Sheriff? Gold. It's a gold. It's a loot from the armored wagon. Kate, I'm arresting you and your whole outfit. Oh, go ahead. I know when the game is up. You deputies disarm those men. What are we doing? Load them into that hearse. We'll haul them to jail in off here. All right, sir. It's there if you will now. Look, Sheriff, the masked man and the Indian are gone. Well, I reckon they figured their job was done. Well, it took the best man in the West to hang the dead wood on us. Hmm, that's something. Look here, kid. Do you know who that masked man is? Yeah. He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature originated by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.